Hey, welcome back everyone. It's Kevin Wallace again, and this is the first of three videos on T-Shoot strategies. T-Shoot, that's one of the courses in the CCMP track. You might take either route or switch as your first CCMP exam, and then the other one is your second CCMP exam. Probably T-Shoot is going to be saved to the end because the T-Shoot exam, or the troubleshooting exam, is going to focus on largely topics covered in the route and switch courses, so it's a good idea to have that foundation before you go out and take the T-Shoot exam. And we want to give you three strategies this month, and the first strategy may seem a bit obvious, but it needs to be said because it's very different than traditional Cisco exam preparation approaches. And strategy number one is to leverage the resources that Cisco gives you. This is fairly unprecedented when it comes to Cisco exams, what is available on Cisco's website. If we go out to Cisco's website and we go under training and events and select CCNP, we can get more information about the exams in the CCNP track. Of course, first you have to be a CCNA, but then the required exams are route switch and T-shoot. And we're focusing on T-shoot, 642-832, that's the exam number. And if you're not aware of it already, Cisco has done us a huge favor and given us a ton of resources to help us get ready for this exam. If we click on the T-Shoot exam, notice that, and by the way, some of these resources might require that you have a valid Cisco.com login, but assuming you have access to these resources, you could check out the exam topics, in other words, the exam blueprint, things to be prepared to face on the exam. And you also see, and this is what I really wanted to point out, the exam demo and tutorial. Let's click on that. The exam demo is a very close approximation to how the real exam works. And it's public knowledge that the vast majority of the T-Shoot exam is resolving a series of trouble tickets. It's not answering multiple choice questions. You'll face a few multiple choice questions, but the bulk of the exam is going to be getting your hands dirty and making sure you really know how to troubleshoot something, which I think is a fantastic approach. And to get the feel of how that troubleshooting simulator is going to work, Cisco gives us an exam demo. And in some of our other strategies this month, I want to take you back out to the exam demo, and we will work through a couple of these together. So that's a spoiler alert. If you want to do them on your own first, feel free to do that, because I'm going to use this to demonstrate a couple of strategies later on in the month. But for now, I want to make you aware of it. And this is very similar to the layout that you'll see on the exam. You'll probably have more than just four trouble tickets, but this is a nice practice. You can read about how you answer the question. As we're going to see, it's a three-part question and you can read a bit about the scenario, a bit about the topology, because it's the same topology for every question. In fact, some of the questions, Cisco tells us, may be the same. In other words, if we take a look at the Layer 3 topology, let me maximize this. If we take a look at the Layer 3 topology, we might be asked the question, or might be asked to resolve the issue of this client, Client 1, not being able to reach this web server on the Internet. Well that same question may be given or that same trouble ticket may be given multiple times during the exam but the reason that client cannot reach this internet web server could be different maybe it's because it doesn't have an IP address DHCP failed maybe it has something to do with route redistribution between EIGRP and OSPF maybe it's a BGP issue maybe it's NAT there's a lot of things that could prevent this from happening and I love the approach Cisco takes you've got to dig into a topology and figure out what's going wrong. And in this sample demo exam, the topology is not quite as complex as what you'll have on the real thing, but it's a great study aid for us. In fact, here's what I would do on the exam. On that dry erase board that you get when you go in, you get the little markers and the, the laminated paper. What I would recommend doing, even though you have this topology available, I would sketch out the topology on the exam because as we're going to see in a later strategy, you'll want to very quickly be able to reference the IP address of every interface hop as we're going from the client and we're going out to the internet. So I would definitely jot that down on that laminated paper at the beginning of your T-Shoot exam. And we don't just have a Layer 3 topology, we also have a Layer 2 topology. It's interesting. That Layer 3 topology did not indicate that we had an access layer switched at it. In fact, let's go back to it. Do you see an access layer switch here? 
No, we, we've got a distribution layer switch, and these clients just magically connect to this distribution layer switch because we're looking at a layer 3 topology. It's not showing the layer 2 access layer switch. We have to look at the layer 2 topology to see that. That can trip people up in the exam. They focus on the layer 3 topology and forget that there are layer 2 switches in the mix. And on the exam, maybe instead of just having a direct link, maybe it's an ether channel that's interconnecting uh, your access and your distribution layer switches. So you need to uh, know how to troubleshoot ether channel issues. Maybe there's a trunk carrying multiple VLANs, as we have here between those two switches. Know how to troubleshoot trunks. And if we take a look at trouble ticket number one, we see that we have a three-part question. The first part asks, on which device is the fault condition located? And we haven't done the troubleshooting for this lab, but just to give you an example of how the questions go, maybe it's on router R2. You would say, next question, and once you've identified the device, you're going to be given a list of technologies that are on that device. So if you pick the wrong device, you're going to be given the wrong list of technologies, and you need to pick the technology that was misconfigured. And let's say it was static routing was misconfigured on this and we click next question and then we say what's the solution you don't actually fix the problem in the exam you identify how you would fix the problem which of these commands would you type in and again the options that were given here are dependent on our previous answer of what technology is misconfigured and that list of technologies that was dependent on the first question which device is misconfigured you might not be able to select the correct technology and therefore the correct solution. And this makes it almost impossible to just guess because you're having to guess multiple things correct. Now how would you go about doing your troubleshooting? Well, you can click on a device like a DSW-1 and we're in, right now it's a switch simulator. We can say enable, we can do a show running config to look at our configuration and something else that's interesting to note and this will be a topic of another one of our strategies as well the configuration changes very little from one trouble ticket to the other the misconfiguration is going to be different but everything that's configured correctly is pretty much going to be exactly the same configuration in the next trouble ticket and the next trouble ticket and that leads to one of our most powerful strategies I think I'm going to make it strategy number three that's going to be coming up later this month. But keep that in mind, that as you're toggling between trouble tickets, the vast majority of the configuration is going to stay the same. And you can have a connection to the PC as well. And here on the PC, it looks like we're at a DOS prompt. And we could do a ping from here as an example. So make sure that as part of strategy number one, you familiarize yourself with this exam demo. Something else I want you to know as part of strategy number one is that the topology that you're actually going to be working with on the exam, it's not the one in the exam demo, but Cisco does give it to us. Check this out. The T-Shoot exam topology. Let's open this up. Let me move this over into our window where we can see it. Cisco tells us that they don't want us to spend our valuable time on the exam trying to learn a brand new topology so Cisco does us the huge favor of giving it to us ahead of time you want to know this topology very very well before you step into the exam because this is the exact topology that you're going to have on the exam and as you're looking through the exam blueprint about all the different technologies that you might be asked about you could draw some interesting conclusions by comparing that list of tested technologies with this topology for example on that list of tested technologies is a service like DHCP and NAT. Do we see DHCP and NAT in this topology? We sure do. We see that router R4 is configured as a DHCP server. We see that router R1 is configured for NAT translation. This is no guarantee that we're going to be asked about those things, but they're certainly fair game. We would definitely want to know What's the proper configuration of a DHCP server? What's the proper configuration of NAT translation? Because it's hard to troubleshoot something if you don't know what it's supposed to look like. We see that we have some route redistribution from OSPF to EIGRP. We have some BGP in the mix. Oh, and this is not just a one-page document. If we scroll down, we see that there's also an IPv6 topology. We've got a GRE tunnel. We're tunneling IPv6 across an IPv4 portion of the network. We also have our layer 2 topology. 
So you want to be familiar with all three of these. And remember, there are three of these. And again, as we're looking through the exam blueprint, maybe we come upon something like IP telephony or video over IP. Do we see any evidence of any IP phones or any video devices in these topologies? I'm not seeing any. And that's not to say that you wouldn't be asked about it, because there are multiple choice questions on the exam. But if I'm wanting to optimize my exam preparation time, making sure that I know how to troubleshoot effectively specific technologies, you might want to spend most of your time on technologies that actually appear in these topologies, things like BGP and NAT and DHCP. And we can see from the Layer 2 topology that we've got Ether Channel. You see we have a port channel interface. It's combining a couple of interfaces, so that's a technology. The exam blueprint tells us we might be tested on first-hop router redundancy protocols like HSRP or VRRP or GLBP. But as we take a look at the topology, we only see one of those three. It's HSRP. I don't see any evidence of GLBP or VRRP. And again, we might be asked about those in a multiple choice question, but it looks like if we're asked about any of those, it's going to be HSRP. So what I'm trying to communicate is, let this topology be your guide as to how to focus your study efforts. Certainly be able to answer questions about anything on the exam blueprint. However, you're going to spend more time studying some technologies than others, perhaps. I would want to spend more of my time focused on technologies that appear in this topology. Well, guys, that is strategy number one. And strategy number one, again, is use the resources that Cisco provides on their website for this exam. They give us the exam demo, they give us the exam blueprint, and they give us the exact exam topology. It's a basic strategy, but it's a powerful one. Make sure you leverage those. We've got some more creative strategies coming up later in the month. We hope you'll stay tuned for those.